Bottom Line, I'm Pastor Rick Utzi from Maranatha Community Fellowship in Plain City, Ohio. Uh, as we're recording this today, it is actually Back to the Future Day. And those of you who aren't movie buffs, that is a movie back in the 80s um, that was made that actually pointed forward to this exact day, October 21st, 2015. So there's all kinds of celebrations going on for Back to the Future and if you have a DeLorean, this is a great day because that was the car that was made back in, I think, 81 or 82, and then it quickly faded away, except for this movie, I think, kept the popularity of that car alive. And so they're celebrating and having a lot of attention brought to that. But also, the movie kind of pointed forward and had some fun things in it and kind of looked to what the future may look like. And did they get anything right? Actually, they did. There were things in there like 3D movies, fingerprint scanners to open things. Um, there was uh, hoverboards, which were quite not to yet, even though I saw some people that have hoverboards that are almost ready to go. There were drones. They even predicted that the Cubs would win the World Series um, in 2015. and, and it's not looking very good for them because they're down 3-0 in the playoffs. But who knows? Maybe they could come back and, and actually win that. I'm sure Chicago fans would be quite happy. But as we look at that and we think about the future, I wonder, do we ever look ahead and think about what our world's going to be like in 30 years, 100 years? What is our reality going to be like in 100 years? Yes, you and I will still exist. And sometimes I think when we look ahead... Or even when we look at our current culture, we can get down and depressed and angry and loud because things don't seem to be going, you know, the way that Christians would like them to go. And so as I thought about that, I was thinking, you know, maybe that's not so bad. I mean, when you look back at the Bible and when you look back at what it had to say, it actually gave us a peek into the future. You know, if you read the book, you kind of know how it ends. And so I want to read out of 2 Peter 2, 1 to 3, because it talks about what it's going to be like in the end times. And it says there, but there were false prophets in Israel. If you go back to 2 Peter 2, verse 1. You know, there's going to be false prophets, and they're going to be false teachers. And it says they're going to deny the master, and they're going to have destructive heresies. And, and it says people are going to follow their evil teaching and shameful immorality. And the way of the truth is going to be slandered. You know, it kind of talks about maybe the day and age we're living in. And so, you know, it says that uh, God condemned these things long ago, and that their destruction will not be delayed. You know, they're not going to get by with it. This isn't going to continue forever and ever. And then it goes on in chapter uh, 3, and it talks about, hey, there's something better coming. And so I want us to have encouragement today, not just disappointment and doubt and anger. Because it says in 2 Peter 3, 13 to 18, it says, We are looking forward, just as that movie was looking forward to 30 years from now. It says in 2 Peter 3, 13, We are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth that he has promised. A world filled with God's righteousness. You know, it says that there is going to come a day when the world is going to be filled with God's righteousness. Not what man thinks is right. Not what, you know, man dreams up. Not with, you know, heresies. And not with, you know, all the problems we see in the world today. But it's going to be filled with God's righteousness. And that's what the new heavens and the new earth are going to be like. And, you know, since it's filled with God's righteousness, if you don't like God or Jesus Christ or His Word, you're not going to be there. That future is not for you. You know, that future is for those who love Christ and His righteousness and the things of God and who want to seek His face and do His will. Those who don't will have another future and that it also talks about in 2 Peter, if you want to go back and read it. It talks about this four-letter word that starts with age called hell. And that is what is reserved for the future of those who don't like God's righteousness. But then it goes on and says that, um, 
And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. You know, he says, even if there's all these things going on around you, false prophets, they're going to be living in a way that isn't pleasing to God. He's saying, hey, those of you who are God's children, hey, live in a way that's as peaceful as possible and live pure and blameless in his sight. Follow God's word. Seek him. Do what he says. Follow his word. You know, he will give us peace and joy and rest. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. And he says, make every effort. That means prepare yourselves for the turnaround. You know, he says there's a different future and that we are on secure footing. If you go down to verse 17, it says, we are to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. He will get the glory in our lives now and forever and ever when he comes again. And so that's a great hope that we have. Are we preparing ourselves for that day that's going to come? And see, here's the bottom line. The world may be messed up that we live in now, but it's going to get turned around. It's not going to get turned around by our government. It's not going to get turned around by Israel. It's not going to get turned around by Russia, as you see their influence in the world today. None of the governments of this earth are going to turn around the world. You know, it's up to us to live pure lives now. It's up to the church to spread God's love and to demonstrate and be a light to this world. But Jesus Christ is the one that's going to come again. He's the one that's going to turn the world around. It's Jesus Christ. So let's look forward to that day. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Bottom Line.